up right now with our top story, Donald Trump making a huge advertising buy in key battleground states. His campaign will spend upwards of $10 million in nine states. They include Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Iowa. Of course, the swing states. These are ads uh, he's expecting to move the needle and help close the gap he has with Hillary Clinton in the polls. But will they? I want to bring in Kelly Riddell right now, Washington Times reporter. Kelly, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. What, what do you think? Is this what he needs to offset what she's been throwing out there, which is a lot of ads, negative ads, because mm -hmm. she's got the money to do so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think by the end of the July, she had run $600 million worth of television ads to Donald Trump's $4.8 million. So he's definitely behind the eight ball when it comes to actually getting out there on TV and, and showing a different side of him, which is the most important thing. We don't want to let Hillary Clinton define him and his message. So to get his message out there in these swing states and counterbalance kind of what she's doing is important. He's got a lot of money, um, and he seems to be sitting on it. So a lot of us have been speculating, what is he actually going to do with this money. You know, ads are number one, but he also needs to build a ground game and an infrastructure out there so that when November comes, he knows where his people are and he can get them out to vote. And that's something that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, it's a, it's a good uh, point. Harlan, does he need to do ads knocking Hillary Clinton or does, does he need to do ads talking about his strength and leadership when it comes to the issues that are important, national security and the economy? Well, I, and I'll, I think Kelly may have a take on this too, but I think that what will be really interesting is, does he go positive at this point um, and leave the negative stuff, the negative ads, the negative media, to the PACs? The PACs are starting to put together very significant money, and I would like to see them go negative while he starts to reintroduce himself as a candidate. He, he, he should take the high road. Yeah, he should take the yeah. high road, and I'm interested in what Kelly has to say about this because she just mentioned the ground game. Um, so basically, she, Hillary Clinton has a staff of about 800 people. He's got yeah. 70 or so. Is that where the money that you had mentioned he's raised that he hasn't deployed yet? Is that where it's going to go? Is it going to go towards the ground effort and, and getting staff in those key battleground states? I mean, and that's where typically on a traditional year with a traditional candidate, that's exactly where it would go. You'd have the RNC doing their part, and they are running the ground game for him. And then you'd have separate uh, ground game teams in battleground states like Florida, like Pennsylvania, like Ohio, where you're going to need that extra uh, voter turnout to, to perhaps swing the election. So far, we haven't seen him do this. We know that she is doing this. And in an election cycle where both candidates are so high, have such high unfavorables, it's really, you, it's really you need to get these people out there. If, you know, even if they hold their nose, you've got to identify them and get them out uh, to the ballot boxes in November. Kelly, there's a, there's a group, uh, apparently the Wall Street Journal is reporting, that there is a group of white Republican retirees moving to Florida, giving Donald Trump a boost in the Sunshine State. Uh, the latest Mason Dixon poll shows that Hillary Clinton uh, has only a two point advantage there. She's at 44 percent. He's at 42 percent among registered voters. What do you think about these white GOP retirees? Is that going to be enough to help Donald Trump, Trump uh, take Florida? Well, it certainly moved the needle, and he needs the needle moved in any incremental bit. Uh, the, NRA, the NRA is also doing a lot on the ground uh, to help uh, get the vote out. Um, but the Trump campaign does need to build an infrastructure there, and I think they're working on it. Uh, their, their latest FEC reports will be telling, but so far we haven't seen much go into actual infrastructure built. A lot being spent on, you know, make America great hats, but not a lot on the ground game. Kelly Harlan Hill here. So one thing that I thought was so amazing about the Obama's uh, campaign in, in 2008 and 2012 is they spent a lot of time on data determining when and where to place Barack Obama because they realized that a campaign's most valuable resource is their candidate. And I see Donald Trump all over the place. He's doing a lot of different media appearances. Sometimes he does uh, different events in states that I don't think that he can win. What are you hearing about being more intelligent about resource allocation, you know, not wasting time on events and, and media here in New York or New Jersey, which he's not going to win, to be honest, and spending it instead in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida, states that he can win? I think Kellyanne Conway is a great addition into the campaign, and I think that we've seen a lot more disciplined Donald Trump since she's been at the helm. Um, he's also hired a Cambridge data analytics firm that Ted Cruz used um, in terms of, uh, of motivating the grass, grassroots and identifying people. So that's a positive step there. They were also actually used um, in the Brexit vote over in Europe in terms of identifying voters who might want to vote leave and then getting them to the polls. So he is slowly kind of getting, getting this, getting his ground game up up and running. It's just, does he have time left? I mean, we're only 70 days or such odd days out to November. So. Yeah, 